For those who haven't watched the earlier episodes, uh, these questions are not from Blue Book, so it's not going to ruin, uh, it's not going to ruin your practice tests. And if you need private tutoring, feel free to reach out. All right, the price of a diamond varies directly with the square of its weight. Okay, all right. So the price varies directly as the square of the weight. So P is equal to some constant K um, W square, right? I hope you know the meaning of directly, uh, varies directly as in direct proportionality. Uh, one day the diamond uh, broke into four pieces with weights in the ratio one to two is to three is to four. And when sold separately, the merchant received 7,000 less than the original price. So what was the original price? Okay. Uh, since this is the ratio in which the in which the diamond broke, uh, so let's say the pieces are uh, individually uh, pieces individually weigh x, two x, three x, and four x. So what is the total weight now? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That makes it ten x. So initial, like the original price, uh, let's call it P one, will be equal to k times ten x square because ten x is the weight. So the original price P one is hundred k x square uh, let's box this in uh, the final price will be the sum of the individual weights right so it will be k x square that's the price of the first piece and then k times 2 x square and then likewise k times 3 x square and then likewise k times 4 x square uh, k x square is taken as a factor so we are left with 1 plus 2 square is 4 3 square is 9 4 square is 16 uh, if we add all of this, we get uh, 30. So this is 30 k x square. This is the value of P2. Now they are saying that he received $7,000 less than the original price. This means that uh, the difference between this price and the that price, as an original minus, you know, the actual one is $7,000, which means that 100 k x square minus 30 k x square is equal to 7,000 which means that 70 k x square will be equal to 7000. Uh, this means that if we divide both sides with 70, we are going to get k x square is 100. Uh, they need the original price. So all we need to do is uh, plug in this k x equal to 100, k x square equal to 100 over here. Um, so obviously, if we plug that in, uh, we are going to get P1 will be equal to 100 multiplied with so that's going to be one followed by four zeros. That's the original price, which looks like option C. All right, this is a pretty good question. We are given a quadratic and we have to find the value of A for which the sum of the squares of the roots be zero. All right, so the sum of the square, let's say the roots are P and Q. So I want to say that P square plus Q square is zero, right? Okay. I don't really know what is, is there any direct formula for p square plus q square, but yes, definitely there is a direct formula for the sum of the roots p plus q, which is given by negative b over a, right? If the quadratic is ax square plus bx plus c, then the sum of the roots will be um, negative b over a. So in this case, p plus q is, uh, what is b here in this case? It's uh, a, uh, sorry, negative of a minus three and a is the leading coefficient that is one. So p plus q will be a minus three. But I need p plus q, uh, or p square plus q square. So let's square this both the sides. So if I do that, remember it will be a whole square. So p plus q whole square will be equal to a minus three square. And if you open this up, we'll be left with p square plus q square plus two pq is equal to a minus three whole square. Uh, we need to find p square plus q square, right? So let's uh, keep this as it is. And p q looks familiar to me. p q is nothing but the product of the roots and the formula for product of the roots is c over a and that is equal to a minus three whole square. Um, I want, uh, what is c? c is a minus two of course and a is just one. So I have p square plus q square plus two times a minus two is equal to a minus three whole square. Uh, what do I want? P square plus Q square to be equated to zero. So from here, if I isolate P square plus Q square, in other words, if I move this over on the right side, I'm gonna get a minus three square minus two times a minus two is equal to zero. 
and all we have to do now is put that in Desmos, obviously replace A with X and get the value of A. So it's gonna look like X minus three whole square, uh, minus two times X minus two. Uh, like I said earlier, uh, put a fraction, sorry, put an expression rather than an equation. So there are actually two answers up to two decimal, up to three decimal places. I'm gonna say that the answer is 2.2 uh, six eight and another value uh, is uh, five point seven three two. So we have two answers. Uh, if this is a student response question, you can fill either of it. Both are correct, right? That's how it works. All right. In this one, uh, it says that a man travels from A to B as follows. He covers three fifth of the total distance at speed three A and two fifth uh, at two B. He then makes a round trip at a speed of 5C. Uh, the total time taken for both journeys is the same. Okay, so both journeys means obviously the A to B was the first one and the round trip is the second one is same. The only reason why I took this question is because uh, this involves uh, a formula that is, usually, that is usually used in physics, which is the time is equal to distance over speed. Right, so now uh, let's say the A to B is actually X. And this is where I have a three-fifth distance, so three-fifth of X, and this is where I have two-fifth of X. Uh, this is traveled with a speed of 3A, and this is traveled with a speed of 2B. Uh, let's say the time here is T1 and the time here is T2. So I'm gonna say that T1 is gonna be distance over speed, so 3X over five over speed is 3A. Uh, if you use keep change flip, I'm going to end up with x over 5a because these two will be gone. So x over 5a, that's the t1. Uh, likewise, I will find t2. That is also going to be distance over speed 2b. These two are gone. So I'm again left with x over 5b. That's t2. Uh, and then we need to find t3 when he takes a round trip. Now remember, round trip would mean that He's now from, he's now at B. So he goes from B to A and then comes back to B. It means that he travels a total of 2x distance at a speed of 5c. So this is T3. And it's given that the two journeys are making the, in the same time, which means that the total time of journey one, that is T1 plus T2, should be equal to the total time of journey two, that is T3. So x over 5a plus x over 5b should be equal to 2x over 5c. x, x, x is gone, 5, 5, 5 is gone. So the answer is 1 over a plus 1 over b is equal to 2 over c, which looks like option c. All right, this one might look like an innocent question, but it's not. Uh, let's try to do it. Two watches were sold for $300 each, one at a loss of 10%, another at a profit of 10%. What is the overall percentage result in the transaction? It means that what is the overall profit or loss? Is that 10% profit, 1% profit, 10% loss, or 1% loss? All right. Uh, now, obviously, if this is, remember, this is the selling price. This is the price at which it is sold. We don't really know the buying price. So let's say the one that is at loss, obviously that will be uh, more, the buying price will be more than 300. Uh, let's say the price is P1. And if it is sold at a loss of 10%, so I will say that P times one minus 0 0.1 should be 300, right? So P1 should be equal to 300 over 0 0.9. This is the buying price of the one that is sold at a loss. Uh, this comes out as 333.33 uh, dollars. So this is the buying price of product one. Okay, uh, the one that is sold at a profit, what will be the buying price? Obviously it will be less than 300. So let's say it is P2. And since it is sold at a profit of 10%, so one plus 0 0.1, and that will be uh, the selling price that is 300. So P2 will be 300 over 1.1, and this value comes out as 272.727 727 probably three. So this is, um, or maybe we can just write it as 73 over here. All right. So this is the buying price of product uh, two.
Okay. Um, what will be now the profit or, and loss of these individual transactions? Uh, obviously, there is a loss here, and the loss will be 333.33 minus 300 because, uh, uh, you know, obviously 300 is a selling and 333.33 is the buying price. So, negative $33.33 is the loss here. And the profit here will be 300 minus this, which is 27. Uh, 0.23 dollars that is the profit over here now oh, for to find the overall profit or loss we first need to find the uh, overall overall profit or loss percentage we first need to find what is the overall profit uh, or loss so obviously overall there is a loss definitely and the loss is going to be uh, the sum of these two uh, in a way that will be a subtraction of course so overall there will be a loss because loss is more uh, that's going to be negative 33.33 plus 27.23, which comes out as 6.1, negative 6.1 dollars. To find the loss percentage, first we need to find the total buying price. The buying price will be the sum of the two boxes. So P1 plus P2, that's going to be 333.33 uh, plus 272.7. So if we add this up, we get 606.06. Uh, so all we have to do is find now that 6.1 is what percentage of 606.01. Uh, Isn't that intuitive? Isn't that just 1%? I mean, looking at the options, there are only two options of uh, loss, 1% and 10%. And if I take 1% of this, uh, I will end up with 6.06. Uh, and that is definitely... The loss so answer has to be option b all right this last one is about uh, pro problem solving and data analysis average marks of a student in 10 papers are 80. Uh, all right then um, it means that we don't know the individual marks obviously in the 10 papers let's say the marks were something like m1 plus m2 and so on over 10 and that is given as 80. So we know that the sum will definitely be 80 times 10, that is 800. Now they're saying that if the highest and lowest scores are not considered, then the average is 81. It means that, uh, I don't know what is the highest and lowest, but definitely the sum can be written as highest plus lowest plus remaining, and that is equal to 800, right? That's what I have so far. Now they are saying that if the highest and lowest are not considered, then the average is 81 which means that uh, only the R, that will be the remaining sum, over, be careful here, since the highest and lowest are removed, so out of 10, we only have eight papers, which means that R over eight, and that should be equal to the new average, that is 81. So the value of R comes out as uh, cross multiplication, eight times one is eight, eight times eight is 64, 648. Uh, this I'm gonna sub in over here, so I'm going to get H plus L uh, will be equal to, uh, sorry, H plus L plus 648 is equal to 800. Subtracting 648 both the sides, I get uh, 152. And we are already given that uh, the highest score is 92. So let's replace H with 92. Um, so I have 92 plus L is equal to 152. So L, what they are interested in, is 60 which is 152 minus 92 that's 60 so the answer is option b all right guys that's all what we had in this video if you found it helpful please like and subscribe support the channel and if you need private tutoring feel free to reach out thank you